and go. So the main thing here is it's a run and gun style game. So you have the ability to shoot various things, but instead of baddies, you're fighting fire, uh, which leads to a couple pretty interesting things. Your main weapon is a, a long spray, which is just at distance, as well as a ground spray, which covers a short distance in front of you. Um, they do the same amount of damage, but there's different properties attached to each. So the, the long spray only can hit one enemy at a time, whereas the ground spray can hit multiple. It also moves me quite a bit slower. The other major mechanic here is my AI-controlled partner, uh, Danny, who, uh, if you attend my stream long enough, you'll also know him as Kevin. Um, but Kevin here <laughs> is the only way that we can progress. He needs to press the button to move forward, so I need to manipulate him a lot. Please don't. Okay. Robot's not, no good. Um, Danny has a number of other uses, but he's also just very temperamental. Uh, with any luck, I'll be able to drag him along with me the whole way through. But uh, this first stage, the entire backstory of what we're doing initially is that, I mean, this is a heavy chemicals company, so of course they happen to just have some super volatile chemicals lying around, and we need to go rescue that. Sitting in the basement, it's called MDL, which as best as I can tell, doesn't stand for anything. But uh, it also introduces us to the major speed mechanics of the game, which will be damage boosts. So my entire health bar should be used as a consistent resource. Uh, the first stage, not so much. There's just not enough to boost off to make it effective. But everything else is built up around trying to get through things. First boss, not much of a challenge. Uh, we have water bombs, which are in addition to uh, both the spray and the jet. And water bombs do an amazing amount of damage. But uh, one of the reasons that you <laughs> you paid for doing the US prototype, uh, this game originally came out in Japan and Europe. So it was slated to come out in the US. Oh gosh, a bad pattern on this stage. Um, but right at the final set, um, before it released, we didn't get anything. Um, they just cancelled it right there. But the prototype exists, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, we get a glorious... Uh-oh. That's unfortunate. I missed the, the small flame. Um, so we get a, a very poorly uh, translated sequence out of it. So, you can rescue various people along the way. I believe that there's one to uh, three people in every stage, and every time you do that, you get some health back. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to be as bad of a fireman as I possibly can and ignore all of them. Sorry, guys. Um, you can also see that there's a lot of fire that I'm just flat out ignoring. This game has some really complex spawn mechanics. So I really have no idea what's coming up in each room. I have uh, a general idea of some of the good configurations, but whatever they give me, I have to deal with. It makes it really interesting as a speed run. Um, I can guarantee you there's some configurations of the rooms that I will have never seen before that'll happen during the course of this run. That explosion has feed the fire. Thank you, Winona. Yeah, the US prototype, maybe it's a good thing it didn't come out. Uh, the script for it is just really awkward and plenty of typos, um, which is really strange because it did come out in the UK, so it has a perfectly reasonable English translation there, but for whatever reason, whatever they decided to go with uh, was a little less than successful. But I'll try and call out uh, the places where it's at least the most humorous. Um, the other thing to note is that this category is deathless. So I'm going to go through without purposefully dying. And uh, death in this game has some very beneficial uh, pieces to it. The main thing is that it gives you a full health refill, so you can, you're free to damage boost as much more as you want. Um, you also get one additional water bomb, and you get an extended invulnerability cycle. So all of those things together mean that you can finish the game about uh, 20 in-game seconds faster uh, with deaths as opposed to deathless, but it's also a lot less safe for a marathon setting. We're also introduced to one of my favorite characters, Frank Weller. 
who apparently did not do a very good job on any safety precaution whatsoever. But don't worry, he's got fine design down. So the fire rate when you beat the boss, is there any, do you get anything for it? Or is it just no, that's, uh, that's just an extra metric. Uh, okay. At the very end of the game, you get a score based on, uh, well, the cumulative amount of uh, how many continues you use, how many people you rescue, your fire rate in each stage, and uh, how quickly you do it. Mm. So it's really difficult actually to get a perfect score in this. Um, so you don't see your score till the end of the game, then? Nope, huh. you do not see your score. I mean, you get the the hints at least, and I can, uh, with a spreadsheet, I'll know exactly what my time is. Um, the primary timing mechanism for this game is in-game time, so uh, I basically watch what the timer is at the very end of uh, each stage, and I can use that to calculate what my end game is going to be. All right, every stage kind of introduces a new mechanic. This one has <laughs> the falling floors, uh, in addition to a bunch more robot friends. Um, the special thing about Danny, on top of just being a real champion and taking out fire with an ax, uh, <laughs> is that he also can one-shot basically every robot, uh, whereas I would need to shoot them for about two seconds. <laughs> yes, what wrong? Thank you, Winona, another choice line. I get this. All right, I think. So those arms, the hitbox for them isn't too bad by itself, but if Danny, uh, Danny decides that he doesn't like them too much, he'll run right up, make them explode, and then that has a huge explosion. So, good job, Danny. Nothing but a fire truck basket ride. He's just relaxing now, man. Yep. Been doing all the work with that X. All right. We got the damage boost there to avoid the explosion. But uh, this is the only point in the game in which you have a forced uh, rescue. So uh, in the deathless category, I'd go through without actually rescuing anybody but this guy. What are you doing? Get over here. What? No. <laughs> Stop it. I need a button. <laughs> He saw something alive, and he did oh, he'd make it not alive. He has, he has just such crazy tunnel vision. He's got to get that fire every time. I'd like to know where he takes the humans at, if he just like throws them out the window. Or... Pretty much. This boss is among the most tricky, because um, it's random where he starts up, and I... Oh, no, that's a terrible mm. position. Uh, get him back in the corner. Okay. This boss has so many forms, and they get progressively harder, but I save up just enough nice. water bombs to take him out. So there's stage three. <sighs> Control panel, got it. Button, button. So how much damage does a firebomb do compared to, like, Of course it's damage, tag? you just kicked it. <laughs> um, let's see, fire does one damage every two frames. Or, I'm sorry, um, the water does one damage every two frames. Fire themselves, one of the key pieces to this is that you have to damage boost off of just the right enemies. Um, most enemies in the game will do eight damage to you, and you have 48 health to start on each stage. Um, but the small flames that appear, these ones right here, only do four damage. Uh, so you want to basically find every opportunity to uh, boost off of those if you get the chance, and absolutely avoid the extra large flames, which not only do 16 damage, but uh, have a heavy knockdown attached to them as well. So, oh my gosh, you actually went right to it. Danny is also oh, a professional nice. kicker. <laughs> Get over here. Oh my, this is a great kitchen. This is all, normally one of the hardest stages just because it's really hard to get Kevin to come along in just the right way. All right. But if you've been paying attention, uh, we've covered, there we go. Um, we have a chemical lab, we've been through a kitchen, a parlor. I have no idea what they're doing with this building, but apparently they're doing something right. Um, every variety of uh, activity you can think of. But now we're in a television studio. Man, this is a chemical company that's really doing well for itself. Uh, but this, 
uh, boss, I the optimal strategy, I need to pick up as many water bombs as I can, um, and I need at least one hit worth of uh, damage boosting on the boss himself to be able to take out as many of his uh, side pieces. Um, but it's a delicate... It's a delicate thing to try and play this through, just because every time that uh, the stage itself is different, I have to worry about, oh, am I going to get through with enough HP, and what? Do something. All right, here we go. It's also the first instance of the heat waves, which do eight damage and knock you down, and the only way to avoid them is ducking, or in my case, damage boosting right through them again. There we go. Oh, nice. Wasted every water bomb. So, if you've also been paying attention, we picked up MDL at the beginning, and then of course we proceeded to go and fight fire with the highly explosive chemical just right at our waist strap. Seems like a good idea. Uh, until now, um, the main plan leading up to this was simply um, to take the MDL, because there's no sprinkler system, we were going to go all the way up to the roof and use the explosion from the MDL to open up the uh, water tank. And that would put out the rest of the fire in the building or something like that. This well, we don't safe. have the MDL anymore. <laughs> we might not be the brightest of firemen. We're, we're doing our best. Um, so now we got to come up with something different. There we go. This is a really dangerous section because we have exploding robots as well as... Uh, oh, stop that. I don't need that. Good thing you got rain that does nothing. The rain actually does do something. It does one damage every few seconds. Oh, wow. I know, right? It's wonderful. At least it does something, though. Yeah. Um, but now we're just a regular office center. Regular. Nothing to, s nothing nothing to see Nothing out here. of the ordinary. You got all the, uh, the normal cleaning flying robots, yep. you know, typical for 2010. They just clean everything with fire. <laughs> Cleanse it with fire. All right, this is, uh, if I was doing uh, the regular any percent, uh-oh, okay. If I was doing any percent, this is the second stage that I would take a death in because there are some really difficult rooms coming up and it's to my, what are you doing? Get up here, Danny. Danny? Oh no. Danny, don't do it. I don't know what you're doing. What? Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Good job, Danny. He, he turns on no clipping mode at some point. Okay. So rescue one more person in here. This is, this is the hell office. Um, there's just so much to navigate around and you really want to avoid spawning as many of those large flames as possible. If you're lucky, you'll get a, a small flame before each one. Uh-oh. I'm not going to make it. Oh, I did. All right. Um, but it's really tricky to get through without that. Did he open that door while attacking the fire? No. You're crazy. <laughs> Don't question him. He does what well, he wants. He's oh. got two arms. Yeah, I mean, he is attacking fire with an axe. I mean, yeah. I'm going to question his ability. So, there is a sequel to this game. Uh, it came out on PlayStation. Uh, and in that game, you can actually have a, a second player control Danny. Um, hmm. Okay, I barely made oh. it. Uh, I need one hit for this boss, because otherwise it can be really dangerous. So, strategy here. If I get two water bombs... And drag Danny. There you go. Speed on him. There we go. Wow, guess so. All right, we're coming in on the final stage now. So how much uh, damage does Danny's axe do? It does four per hit, and he can swing it twice uh, in a second. Wow. Green button and seven. That's some security code. Good job. You found seven, <laughs> Danny. So we're trying to prep a room at the very top, right near the uh, the water tank, to to blow up when we cause a backdraft, because that's that's our next best idea, um, causing a backdraft explosion to take out the water tank. 
Unfortunately, all the power is cut off to the shutters. Uh, that wasn't a good start. This is a really dangerous section. The entire uh, area up here. Oh. Okay, another 8 damage that I did not need to take. Um, I do have a backup strategy, but ideally I'll be able to get through to the stairwell to the rooftop without taking any more damage than this. But since this is the final stage, we also get introduced to all sorts of new flame types. Um, they've been gradually introducing them as we go along, but uh, now they see it fit to uh, give us the rest of them. The main thing, though, uh, are the ones you see on the rooftop, because you'll have a couple of uh, what I call chasers. And what they do is they just move up to you really quickly and stop. They won't touch you right out. That You need to walk into them for it to hit, but it's kind of unnerving otherwise. And the other big one is the sploders, and they'll be uh, pretty self-explanatory when we get there. Oh, good stage. This, uh, this room in particular is one that Danny really struggles with. I have a good amount of HP. We're going to do this. No backup strats today. All right. The rooftop is just all around dangerous. And if I get a good pattern, I should be able to damage boost through most of it. But... Uh, I need enough health going into the final boss to feel a little better about that. There's the Sploder. You can tell because no other audio plays when a Sploder is going. Whew, the dodges. Right, one more. Oh, okay, that was a key damage boost. The body of the Sploder only does 4 damage, but they're constantly exploding, which does 16 and a heavy knockdown. So you have to kind of get in right between uh, when they're exploding. How much health do you say you have total? 48. 48? Wow. That's quite a bit, then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a serious business. There's another mechanic that uh, you've not seen yet, and that is when you have three water bombs and you pick up a fourth, rather than uh, give you more water bombs, you can't get more than three, you get super water which now you're doing 50% more damage. Um, but the caveat is if I get hit at all, it goes away. So damage boosting goes out the window at that point. So it's not really useful until this last sequence. Yeah, right there. There you go, final boss. Nice. But wait, time's not yet. You gotta cause the backdraft yet. When the window shatters, it's time. All right, I got a good position right off the start. Nice. And time. All right. We'll let the short ending sequence go through because that's probably the most significant part of playing on the US prototype beyond just having every character's name capitalized and various other really awkward translations throughout. Um, the game itself is a lot of fun. I encourage anybody, if you have an opportunity to give this a try, oh, do you hear me? Good job. Oh, he can hear him. He can hear her just fine. Um, it's a really unique take on, on the run and gun genre. And uh, there's a lot of complexity to finding the exact right way to try and go through. Um, and like I said, it's, there's just so much uh, randomness to how things spawn and, and how you're able to manipulate it that going through is different every time. Um, but yeah, now we get some, some parting words of wisdom from Pete and some extra choice words from Mr. Frank Weller. Look how he said he was stuck under a beam and that was like clearly just a giant rock. It's, that's the beam that I've seen. <laughs> So, since I finished the game with Super Water, I get Super Water in this ending sequence too, which will give me a, that little steam effect, as well as uh, Wheel Pete, good job. Um, as well, it'll speed up the movement as I walk around the corner here. Pete gets a little poetic. Hmm. 
Hmm. Krong? Yeah, what went Krong? What didn't go Krong? <sighs> it's Christmas Man from Mega Man 13. And there you go. Uh, the uh, classic uh, uh. ending. So at the very end, it'll go through the credits and uh, it'll give me various score rankings, so the, the final in-game time, what my fire rate was, how many people I rescued, how many continues I used, but this was deathless. And uh, that's all we need to know for now. So everybody get ready for Plock with Countdown up next. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me today. Look forward